Behind me, students are working hard on the cases, how to solve different issues in the aquaculture industry. And this is special this year is that we have Juliet, who will be running around the exhibition and presenting <laughs> challenges or solutions. And Juliet, first, I need to know who you are. Yes, my name is Juliet Linsmeyer. I am a, a student from New Zealand, the University of Waikato. And I am here with the KiwiNet Emerging Innovators to meet with people here at Aquanor, uh, meet with industry leaders and find out what they're doing here that we can actually bring back home and do better. Uh, since Norway is way ahead of us when it comes to aquaculture, and we can take a lot of those experiences and values and bring those home. How have you found being here at Aquanoa? It's been amazing and inspiring. There's incredible innovation happening everywhere that I look. And it's been amazing talking to these leaders in the industry and uh, really inspirational. I can't wait for you to see a little bit more about it. And Juliet, you've already been out there and uh, we're going to see the first of your three reports. Mm -hmm. Take it away. So here we go. Challenges or solutions. When it comes to feeding the world using aquaculture, I'm going to go around and start asking people, are we only seeing challenges or are we seeing solutions? In a world where there's only so few things we can do to get food for everybody, I think uh, the potential of this industry is, is very big and we, we cannot keep on fishing like we've fished for decades. I think um, reducing mortality is obviously a huge feature that needs to be improved and also using more technology and AI solutions to improve the growth cycle and reduce the cost for farmers. Just opening our minds to basically what's, what's around us in terms of natural resources and how we can utilize them to feed a, a growing population in the world. And that's what's led us to supplying seaweed into the aquaculture world and into the animal health world in general. For us, it's exciting because of all species. We work with all species around the world, from shrimp to salmon to tilapia, catfish, sea bass, sea bream. We're trying to feed the world with aquaculture. What do you think is the best way to get there? Technology is a, is a good thing, and implementing it where we've never had technology before is definitely moving the industry forward quite quickly. So we are spreading the high technology, the, the core technology, from Norway to worldwide. I would say regulations are probably where we are today. That's why we are very proactive in making sure that we are, have zoned areas ready, trying to find the areas that are fitting for this kind of industry. The biggest challenges now is making the biology grow with the technology, but also think about the fish as an individual. How to solve uh, feed, to find the correct food for the fish. I think you can grow the industry by creating framework in the countries where the industry is existing. The industry needs, of course, guidance in, in how to create the best possible animal welfare and improve the, the production of, of really sustainable food for the for the people. The journey we are on is immensely interesting environmentally. I'm here with uh, uh, Jermen Fogt. Uh, we are going to talk about fish quality in a different aspect than fish welfare or how to produce it in the sea because you are working with actually monitoring the product that I find in, in the stores. But first, yeah. tell me, Jermen, uh, what is um, uh, Eurofins? Eurofins is one of the largest uh, laboratory companies in the world. Yeah. And we uh, have perhaps two, three 300,000 different kind of analyses yeah. from microbiology to advanced chemistry. And we can uh, put the picture apart in different kind of chemicals because everything is chemistry in the world. Yeah. yeah. So and what you're looking for is, of course, in the fish in different stages. I know that you also monitor the fish from when it's a small and yep. when it's in the cages. But I'm kind of curious on, on what you are looking for. Uh, mostly we had to, to analyze and, and also our customers have to analyze uh, according to the regulation we have, yep. uh, the food regulation. And then we have uh, different things like uh, pollutants, yep. dioxines, PCB, and, and, and so on, and also heavy metals. And we also have to check the microbiology in the fish uh, during the shelf life. 
have you found uh, differences between what is aquaculture and what is wild caught? Yes, we can see that very clear. And the, the, the thing we can see it on is mostly the fatty acid composition. Yeah. Yes, because you have two essential uh, two fatty acids, omega 3s, called EPA and DHA. And the DHA and EPA level in, in the farm salmon is much lower than in the wild salmon. And that, then there is the uh, issue of pollutants. There are much more pollutants in the, in the, in the wild fish than in the, in the, in the farm fish. Yeah, and, and, and why is that? That's because of the, the food it, he's eating. Yeah. Yes, the, you have the pollutants in the sea and it accumulates during the food chain up yeah. to the salmon, so it gets an accumulation of these uh, compounds. Yeah, but, and if you but, have a farmed fish, it will eat these organic pellets? Yeah, uh, which are low in pollutants. Yeah. But there is a, a focus in media yeah. that say that, oh yeah, I cannot eat farmed salmon because it's so full of pollutants. Yeah. It's uh, all these chemicals, the forever chemicals, the P PFAS, whatever. But that's bullshit. Oh, <laughs> yeah. so it's, it's, a it's, it's, not, it's a myth. Yeah. If you want to buy a clean fish in your shop, then you buy a farmed salmon. Yeah. yeah. And, and you're an independent uh, research company. Yeah, we are that. And, and, and they also say that the, the farm fish is full of antibiotica yeah. and so on. That's also uh, a myth. Because you have checked it. Yes. <laughs> so if um, I will not uh, go into farm fish from uh, uh, outside Europe, but we also import some farm fish from other side. Yeah. There they have other regulations and then they perhaps can get some more other pollutants in. This was enlightening. Thank you so much for yeah. sharing this with us. Very nice to be here. Thank you. That's interesting uh, science on the food that we put on our plate. We are going to move over to the bigger picture of aquaculture. My next guest is already here, Thomas Fucht Eriksen, Global Director of Aquaculture in DNV. And first uh, you have to tell me a little bit, what, what do you do in the aquaculture sector? DNV has served the aquaculture sector for quite many years from our traditional, let's say, engineering or technical competence uh, services, starting with, uh, I mean, from the maritime sector with uh, uh, ships and boats, uh, well boats, uh, service uh, industries, and then also on the structure side of, uh, of uh, certifying um, uh, new, uh, let's say, farm and uh, based on the new tech uh, regulation, uh, yeah. which is the prominent one in, uh, in Norway. Uh, we have also served with uh, environmental uh, services uh, that we are delivering to several sectors in, um, in, uh, in Norway and, and internationally. Yeah, so you have been traditionally, yeah. what we would say, on the hardware side? Traditionally on the hardware side, exactly. But I assume that now as we see both the challenges uh, increasing yes. and also the complexity increasing, you are working also a lot on the software side. Absolutely, and not the least in the life in the pen. We have acquired a company and a group, Åkerbro Group, yeah. uh, with a lot of that competence. And that was exactly what we intended to do, so that we got that knowledge also as part of our, uh, our competence uh, base and of course basis for the services that we provide to the industry. And, and our theme for this episode mm. is feeding the world. Mm. And where do you see that our biggest challenges are? Is it the feed? Is it the... Uh, climate change, is it uh, lies, it, where should we start or is it everything? It is everything, it <laughs> is everything and I think it's uh, not about starting, it is about kind of continue to do uh, work on the, all those uh, elements and challenges that you uh, mentioned and maybe also that the industry has to be even better in communicating the benefit and uh, how that can help from many perspectives uh, to feed the world yeah. and to do it in a better and more efficient and uh, climate friendly way. I think you have a very good point there because when you see this at Aquanu, all the players here, mm -hmm. the suppliers, mm -hmm. the producers, uh, and it's an extremely advanced industry and mm -hmm. I think people don't know anything about it outside the, the industry. No. 
Uh, you are absolutely right, and I mean, again, I mean, for me, being an, uh, an uh, let's say, four years ago, new, uh, knowing very little about the industry, maybe some of the certification services that Dean we traditionally have provided, there is so much competence, so much knowledge, and so much that is actually happening here in order to improve this business day by day. Yeah, so if you think that the, this is uh, very difficult to get a grasp of, a good place is to start with DNV. Exactly. <laughs> Aquanur is a very important uh, meeting place. There's uh, lots of things going on in addition to the exhibition. And let's now hear what some of the top leaders in the industry has to say. During Aquanur 2025, there's been a lot of seminars. One very popular one about the growth in the industry and how to achieve this was with the top player in the industry. We talked to some of them. What are the biggest challenges for producing more food from our waters? Yeah, the, the main problem in Norway is the political system and the regulations and so on, so it's very hard to, to expand. And after that, of course, we focus every day on fish welfare. Fish welfare is, is really uh, the most important thing. You have to show this beautiful animal uh, in its prime condition, which we do 90% of the time. And then we have some challenges with mortality, uh, with uh, quality. Uh, I think we need to focus more on uh, genetics, on vaccines, uh, on technology, of course. It takes about four years for a salmon to develop. It takes one or two decades to develop a company. And it probably takes about half a century to develop an industry. And all you need throughout that period is stability. And you have enough challenges in changing environments, changing competition, changing biologies. You do not need changes in regulatory environments as well. And we see that many countries have taken that to heart. We see that that's happening in Scotland. We see that uh, Iceland is modernizing their regulatory systems. We see the Faroe Islands are doing tremendous efforts of making sure that they're in the forefront. And for the most important um, uh, nation in this industry, Norway, we are struggling with it. And that's something we could change. We were the first ones out in this industry, but we we're starting to lag behind. And that's a severe threat to every single company. So uh, actually, instability is uh, the major threat, not the lice. Not the lice, no. We focus solely on lice as the problem in the industry. We risk creating others that we overlook and create a regulatory system based on a single input factor, which may not be sufficient when we're de dealing with biological creatures developing over several years. It's blocking our view in a way. It is, yes. And it's, um, it, it's not that it's unimportant, but we're making it the sole source of re the regulatory system. The temperatures in the sea itself is, is, is changing over time, and that may have an impact as well. That could be vastly more important than the lice issue, which I'm pretty confident will be solved by the industry within the next four or five years. Wise words from Jon Gunnar Pedersen, partner Arctic Securities, and former deputy Minister in the Finance Department. Yes, technically. Yeah.